All right. Welcome back to the No Limits podcast. We have a very special returning guest, Keemstar. What's up, brother? What's going on? What is going on? Thank you guys for having me once again. Oh, yeah, for sure. No problem. Last time I wasn't here, uh, I was just Prab doing the interview with you, but I'm joined with Prab now. So um, let's just kick it right off. Wait, 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 Keem. I actually wanted to ask, like, oh, I don't know God. if you know this, but just a year ago, you you came on for the first time and I was co-hosting with Fight Lounge. Like, do you remember that by any chance? Uh, Briefly, yeah. Yeah, that was so. It's like a year later, you're back on again, which is pretty sick. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, because there. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right, Keem. Um, honestly, I just want to ask, what is going on in your life right now? You're huge right now on YouTube game, obviously. Uh, Twitter as well. I see you're very active. Um, I just wanted to know what's going on in your personal life. You know, let's move aside from a little bit of that, you know, direct stuff. Um, well, me and my beautiful girlfriend, Brantley, we started doing ice baths and sauna, um, oh, okay. for the, the health benefits of that. So oh, we've yeah. been on that grind. I'm day two on it. I can do about 30 seconds. She could do the full three minutes of the ice bath. Damn. Um, so I'm working my way up. Um, I, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not really much going on in my personal life. So is that like so is that like your main focus right now? Because you're not really posting like drama alert videos and stuff like that. So what's your like focus like that keeps you going throughout the day? Uh, I mean, it's not one single thing. Like I, I never do one thing. I'm always doing multiple things. Right. Yeah, so, man. you know, we got drama alert, uh, which I do on Snapchat. You know, I'm constantly I live on Twitter. Yeah. Um, we have my podcast with Pat God, who's an up and coming YouTuber who's just crushing it right now, getting anywhere between like two to four million views per video. Mm -hmm. He's got like one of the fastest growing dis, uh, cord, um, discords in, in the world. He's adding like 10,000 new members a day. Um, so he's crushing it. Uh, the, the few things that me and Pat God have done together have done very well. Um, working on a song, uh, working on a music video. Mm -hmm. uh, Were you? You're making yeah. a song. Oh, yes. shit. <laughs> Damn. I didn't even know about that. I'm uh, developing. Uh, I got two video games in development. Uh, there's 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 a lot. Of course, we got Happy Punch and, you know, building um, cards for for Misfits, which I've been doing since the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, helping Mams Taylor set all that up. And then also Happy Punch is doing their own card. Um, so... Yeah, I'm busy. I'm doing some things. I'm doing a lot of okay. things. I don't yeah. think I even named everything. I'm starting a plumbing company soon. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's pretty big. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a shortage of blue collar workers, um, out there. Like if you if you try to get a plumber or welder or just you know a fix it up guy, a carpenter, anything, yeah, uh, you're gonna pay through the roof, and mm -hmm. uh, they're not gonna be able to help you right away. You know, so what I've been doing is I've been dumping some money into some local people that have the skills um, to create their own companies, because if they get a bank, if they get a bank loan right now, interest rates are through the roof. So it creates an opportunity for uh, for me to make investments into hardworking individuals and for them to, uh, you know, have their own companies. Oh, OK, that's pretty big. Um, one thing that caught my um, attention, the video games, you're developing video games. What type of video games are you developing? Well, I have um, I have a video game that is surrounded around. Um, it, it's basically based on um, metal detecting. Um, so metal if you detecting. think of metal detecting for change and stuff in the dirt, right? You have a metal detector that you're scanning over the ground yeah, yeah. and you're looking for treasure. Um, this is a mobile game where you scan your phone, walk outside around the entire earth and there's treasure hidden all over the place. Oh, dang, that's um, cool. We incorporated that with NFTs and whatnot. So you can find NFTs in the ground, something of real value. Mm -hmm. um, and you can sell those or, you know, hold on to them, exchange a, a whole marketplace. This has been a development for like the last two years. Really? Uh, so I got that in the works. And then also um, we're making a, a boxing type game. Mm -hmm. um, we have some partners that we're, we're working on that with. So yeah, there's just, there's just a lot of stuff. Yeah. That's really and also, you know, uh, right now I just um, put together a 
basically a AI dev team to work with uh, chat GDP and some of the new AI technologies that are out there right now. Um, we have a lot of different projects. Um, if you're not working with AI technology that's out right now and you're not doing stuff with it, then you're just, you're dumb because <laughs> right now is a gold mine and absolute, like this AI technology that's available, that's open source and available for anyone to use right now is like yeah. the beginning of Bitcoin, right? If you could buy Bitcoin for half of a cent, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you had that opportunity, you knew about it and you didn't take advantage of it. You know, now you probably look at that and you're like, I'm an idiot. I should have taken advantage of that. It's the same thing with this AI technology. Yeah, that's for um, sure the future. If you're not doing stuff with that and trying to figure out how to make money with that right now, you're just, you know, you're dumb. <laughs> well, one thing you got to make sure is it doesn't turn into like another crypto zoo. Are you making sure of that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, regarding crypto zoo, I, I wanted to ask you about this for a while now. You know, in Logan Paul's response video to CoffeeZilla, how we took like a little dig at you? Like, yeah. how did that make you feel? Uh, well, it didn't make me feel any certain way. Logan Paul hates my guts because, you know, I've covered him on Drama Alert a lot, doing a lot of cringy things and a lot of bad stuff. And it came to a bo boiling point. And obviously, the, him versus KSI, I'm team KSI, right? So, you know, yeah. I campaigned against Logan Paul for a very, very long time when they were um, boxing each other. Um, but on top of that, uh, there was a video that surfaced where it sounded like he said the N word. And uh, I posted on Twitter and I was like, did Logan say the N word? And he blocked me and he's been a, <laughs> he's been a hater ever since. So that was like 2018, I want to say. Yeah. So he hates my guts. He always talks negative about me. Faze Banks went on impulsive and he goes, how are you friends with Keemstar? Like he's, just, <laughs> he's just really salty. And it doesn't make sense because I have complimented Logan yeah. so many times. Like when Logan's doing good or Logan has an achievement, I recognize that. Yeah. And I, I talk about, you know, these achievements. Like I'm not a fucking Logan Paul hater. All right. But he is a Keemstar hater. And, um, you know, I just think it's funny that you yeah. can. You know, you can have someone that has that much success and I can still live uh, rent free in his brain. Damn. If he hates you so much, why doesn't he fight your boy, Salt Poppy? Exactly. Instead, he's placing bets, making money off him. Shit. <laughs> no, but let me say this. Let yeah. me say this, though. Uh, I do appreciate Logan Paul um, supporting Salt Poppy the way he has. You know, even when Logan Paul fought uh, Andy Worski, or excuse me, when salt poppy fought andy worski logan paul put out some positive tweets uh supporting salt poppy so um i thank logan for that and um you know also like logan's wwe career is fucking insane and awesome and you know he deserves all the praise in the world for that but the thing is i feel like is there anybody that's not supporting salt poppy right now i feel like that's like the cool thing to do now yeah well that's what i'm saying salt poppy is a superstar in the influencer boxing space 100 percent. 100 and if you don't think so then you're insane like i've been talking to some of these people behind the scenes and they're not trying to pay him right and they're not trying to treat him like the superstar he is and it's like there is no one else that is like fucking trending worldwide there's no one no one's trending worldwide it is just salt poppy no one is like getting any her eddie hearn to talk about him in this space yeah. like salt poppy is at the top of the food chain right now and yeah regarding salt poppy i heard uh he's now co-owner of happy punch yes so can we get a little update on like foozy like where he is regarding um happy yeah so foozy after his fight you know, and it's no secret he's publicly tweeted this. Yeah. Um, has had like a, a mental breakdown and you know, like mental issues, which he's battled with his entire life. He went from working out and being, you know, the healthiest he's ever been in his entire life, um, getting completely sober on everything. Yeah. Um, and um just being on a high in life to then taking that L from Deji, getting his nose uh broken again having to get the surgery, having to spend, you know, a, a big chunk of his payday for mm -hmm. fighting Deji on just fixing his nose. And, you know, 
it just put him in a in a horrible depression like mental health uh state so he's just he can't function online you know he can't he can't do online he can't be on twitter he can't be on youtube it just drives him insane and so he he's going to get health and hopefully um you know getting cured for uh for, for his mental health right now okay no that's good to hear but so what was the decision to make salt poppy co-owner of happy punch salt poppy fought someone that no one would fight josh bruckner nobody in this influencer space would fight him and not only did he fight him but he beat uh bruckner in such a, a amazing fashion right yeah. yep. and uh did it in a very entertaining way um so we just gave salt poppy some equity in the company because nice. when salt poppy uh decides to no longer box you know in, in the influencer space again and he decides to retire um i want happy punch to always be a home for him whether he helps other fighters or whatever he wants to do um in the company um i wanted to let him know that like you know um we obviously got behind him to support him and promote him and give him an opportunity but his performance in the ring has given so much back to happy punch that we always wanted to be equal right we always wanted to be fair to who we're doing business with and i felt like yes we helped him but he has helped us more yeah. so how can we get to more like equal partnership type of thing and the best solution to that is give him some equity in the company okay okay and another thing i think you mentioned in one of these twitter spaces about salt poppy was he actually got you guys actually or he got offered to fight floyd mayweather right so why did that fight not happen they they didn't offer any like any reasonable amount of money like it was like if you heard the number you'd like laugh but <laughs> yeah they they i don't know i understand that floyd mayweather um has made a lot of money and it's been very successful but i don't know if he actually understands how much money influencers make because of what the offer the offer came over like salt poppy was an amateur boxer or something you know those guys okay. make like, like little little money little pay yeah you know and that's how the offer came over and we just like we laughed <laughs> So you think like the money wasn't worth like the opportunity, the sponsors he could it wasn't, have got. It wasn't just it wasn't just Saul Poppy. They 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 hit up Kenny. They hit up a bunch of different influ influencer boxers, and every single one of them said no. Shit, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So it's not that I think it's that the this entire influencer boxing industry thinks that like the the money offer was a joke. What about the offer of uh, Saul Poppy fighting on a Jake Paul card? You said he got offered, but MVP said that's fake. Yeah, so MVP's lying. They definitely offered to put Saul Poppy on a on on one of the undercards. So why did Jake you guys, Paul like, tweeted out? Jake Paul tweeted out, "I'd fuck Saul Poppy." So we <laughs> immediately went into negotiations <laughs> with Nikisa. All right. Yeah. And we started talking to Nikisa about Saul Poppy fighting Jake Paul, mm -hmm. and it started you know, they started acting like they were open to it. And then the counter oh. in negotiations were, well, Saul Poppy can fight on the undercard. All right. And by the way, does anyone actually fucking believe it in this entire community, right? That Nikisa and MVP, Jake Paul's company, wouldn't want Salt Poppy on the undercard? Does anyone believe that that's a lie? Because if you think that's a lie, you're a fucking idiot. You mean to tell me Logan Paul and Jake Paul are sitting there in a fucking room talking about Salt Poppy. Logan Paul puts a $100,000 bet on Salt Poppy. They're there together. Then Logan Paul, and excuse me, Jake Paul tweets out, I'd fuck Salt Poppy. Right. <laughs> you mean to tell me that those guys right there didn't want Salt Poppy on their undercard? Of course they would. Of course they would. Yeah, for so sure. Like the fact that Nikis or MVP would be like, oh, well, that's a lie. You're a fucking idiot. Who's going to believe you, motherfucker? Like you're dumb, bro. Don't fucking say that that's a fucking lie. Don't call me a fucking liar. <laughs> like you're an idiot to even try to convince people that that's a lie. You're fucking dumb. So, so the question is, would you want? Salt Poppy on a Jake Paul undercard. 
Where did where, what? How exactly did they say that was a lie? I want to know uh, about this. I'm a fucking. I, I know they I, replied under like a post saying this is false news. I think that's all they said. They're so full of fucking shit. They're so full of fucking shit. <laughs> they but but do you not want him on a Jake Paul undercard? Like, don't you think that's like a good move or not? Nah? How? I feel like that brings. I know he's getting the mainstream attention, but I feel like that'll even get him even more, and maybe a closer step to a future Jake Paul fight, dude. Jake Paul has never had anybody on his undercard worth watching to this community, to this online community. He always puts like, you know, pro boxers on his undercards. All right. Yeah. That's why yeah. nobody watches Jake Paul undercards. All right. People that buy a Jake Paul pay-per-view watch it to watch Jake Paul fight. Jake People Paul, that yeah. buy a KSI pay-per-view watch the entire event. They exactly, watched the yeah. entire event. I will say this, MVP, all right? I went to Jake Paul versus Woodley, and guess what? The stadium was fucking empty until Jake Paul fought, and no one gave a fuck about anybody on that undercard until Jake Paul fought. I went to the KSI Misfits 1. That stadium was packed from the very fucking beginning, all right? And I've seen these other Misfits events that happen. I watched the pay-per-views. They're packed from beginning to fucking end. Jake Paul and MVP cannot even fucking come close or compare to a misfit card. So when you ask me, don't you think that would be good for Jake Paul or, or, or for Salt Poppy to be on an undercard <laughs> of Jake Paul? Let me say this. Good to who? Not good to us. That's good to Jake Paul because his undercards fucking suck. And that's a fact. All right. All right. Fair. Fair. Am so I wrong? Don't say fair. Am I wrong? So, in my opinion, I just thought Saul Poppy already has all of the influencer fans' attention. I just thought it would benefit him getting, like, pro boxers. Oh, so Ryan well. Garcia is not tweeting about uh, I mean, like, Saul Poppy. Eddie Hearn's not tweeting, publicly tweeting about Saul Poppy. If you don't think the pro boxing scene doesn't know who Saul Poppy is, you're, I don't know what's going on, man. I didn't say that, Keem. That I meant the fans. The who fans that watch the undercard. Who has a better undercard, Jake Paul or KSI? I'd say KSI, of course. Thank you. I rest my case. MVP needs <laughs> needs Salt Poppy on their undercard. We don't need to be on Jake Paul's undercard. We don't need to be on. We have misfits. Okay. All right. So for Salt Poppy's next fight, there's no one locked in, right? There's no one. So far, there's some potential opponents. I, who do you want? I would personally, well, look, here, here's who needs to fight Saul Poppy because Saul Poppy has absolutely earned this, right? And these other guys are ducking, all right? KSI, Jake Paul, Logan Paul, Deji, uh, King Kenny, Gib, and Slim. Those are the people right there, those seven people who need to fight Saul Poppy. They won't, they're all ducking. They're every single one of them is ducking. Kenny is saying, like, I'll fight Saul Poppy eventually. You know, a lot of yeah. these guys, I'll fight Saul Poppy eventually. But he's earned uh, his next fight to be with one of those guys. But they're all yeah. ducking. And I want this community to be very clear and, and understand that they are ducking Salt Poppy. So what I think we need to do um, for our next step is we need to fight some of these Spanish guys because these Spanish guys have more clout than everyone I just named, right? Uh, these Spanish guys, like their fights on YouTube and whatnot, uh, pull millions and millions and millions of views. Um, you know, they're definitely on a level of KSI and Jake Paul and Logan Paul. Um, so I, I think that's who we need to fight next. What about Winderson Nunes? Have you heard of him? Yeah, he's been ducking us. We've been trying to fight oh, him. Oh, he's not down? He's not down? Yeah, he's been. He mm. won't respond to us. He won't respond to anyone. So I get these guys are ducking, right? But do they at least give you a reason, like why we're not going to fight Saul Poppy? Of course, everybody's got an excuse. When you're when you don't do your homework and you go to school, you just tell the teacher like oh, I just didn't do it, or do you come up with an excuse? But what's the excuse? Most of the I time, mean, what do you hear? It's all different types of – it's like, oh, well, we'll fight him eventually. Oh, this doesn't make sense. We have some other opportunities. Or, look, you know, I, I want to change white classes or, you know, I don't want to fight people that heavy. Like, it's all different excuses. It's all it's mm -hmm. all the same thing, though. It's still a duck. 
Shit. You guys yeah, are making a uh, Happy Punch event, right? Soon? Like a exclusive Happy Punch event? Um, I can't talk on that, but yes, Happy Punch will be building its own card very soon. Shit. Okay. Okay. Many of you have anything? Looking, looking at May, May of 2023. May. I was 2023. just gonna say, yeah, Soul Puffy definitely deserves like a big fight, you know. As and I definitely agree with those big seven right now are pretty big. But then, even in like the Spanish part of that, you know, those guys are pretty big too. And Soul Puffy does deserve a bigger fight for sure. Yeah. Keem, so I made a statement before. I don't know if you agree with this or not. I said Keemstar is the original Andrew Tate. What's your thoughts on that statement? Oh, okay, Thank nice. You. Great. Are you just showing off? <laughs> uh, no, I needed something to drink. Okay, nice. <laughs> so did you hear my the statement? The original Andrew Tate? How so? I feel like there was a lot of similarities. Like, you really didn't give a fuck what people thought of you. You you advocated for free speech. Of, of course, not like 100%. You guys are similar, right? You were getting canceled heavily. You didn't really care. I feel like that's very similar to Andrew Tate. Um, I just like, I just always say what I think. And I don't really care the repercussions. I just always just do and say what I think. And, you know, it's like we, we online and the online world, you know, everyone's obsessed with being liked, right? Yeah. They want to be loved. They want to be liked. They want the audience to, to uh, think highly of them. I just always want to be viewed. You know, I just want views. I want people to listen to me. I want people to hear my voice. And um, I think that's kind of what makes me different than most people. I don't know. Yeah. So, so what's what's your thoughts on Andrew Tate himself? Are you a fan? Um. I would say, yeah, in some in some sense, yeah, I'm I'm a fan of Andrew Tate. I mean, he says like a lot of sound good advice for young men all of the course, time. Yeah, for sure. For um, sure. he also will put out some questionable stuff, right? <laughs> that I don't disagree with. Um, it's weird because we live in this black and white like online world where it's <clears> like, <throat> oh, do you like Andrew Tate? And if I say yes, it's like then someone in the audience, right, with their little fucking low IQ <laughs> brain goes, oh, you agree with everything that Andrew Tate has ever said in his entire life? That's yeah. not how the world works. But how the online world works, let me explain it to you, yeah. is there are a bunch of fucking idiots online. So dumb. Like, we have to go and fix our education system, all right? Because the IQ of the average, like, individual online is so incredibly low it's embarrassing, but things are more complex. They're not black and white. They're gray. Right. And when I hear Andrew uh, Tate speak, I, I find myself agreeing with a big portion of what he has to yeah. say. Mm -hmm. There are, there are, there's really good sound uh, advice about like being a man and like taking care of yourself and, mm -hmm. you know, be a high valued man. And, you know, yeah, no, there's like a lot that. of truth there. When it comes to like, you know, women and like disrespecting women and stuff like that. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I do disagree with where I'm like, yikes, you know. Um, but yeah. What about his uh, recent case? Um, they had him locked up for a couple of days, you know, so a couple of weeks, actually. Let what me you, what's your thoughts this, on that? Let me preference this by saying I don't know if Andrew Tate is guilty mm -hmm. or innocent. And if he's guilty, all right, of, of, you know, basically kidnapping women and making them do sex work. Yeah. And he belongs in jail. All right. Exactly, however, yeah. however, all right. I haven't seen fucking any evidence that he is guilty. In fact, the mainstream media said that there was these two women that were like kidnapped and forced to do sex work for him or, or whatever. All right. Yeah. They came out and said, that's not true. Completely all right. Debunked. Then I just seen an, art, uh, uh, an article that basically the Romanian courts said that the two women that said that they were not forced to do anything right. That they're uh, wrong. 
and brainwashed, uh, they said. they're brainwashed or whatever. It's like, what the fuck is going on? Like, <laughs> you know, it's like we never um, we never see people be fucking fair um, and honest with any of this shit. All right. Yeah. Before Andrew Tate was arrested, you had all these YouTubers and content creators saying that he was a sex trafficker. All right. They were, dude, I'm talking about fucking people with millions and millions of followers online, YouTubers, Twitch streamers, TikTokers coming out saying Andrew Tate is a sex trafficker. All right. Yeah. They were so confident in saying that based on what? We <laughs> no have the one. Romanian government that hasn't even been able to prove anything or put forth any evidence. And <laughs> they they've been working on up. it since last April. So how the fuck does, does Mr. YouTuber sitting in his fucking, you know, his bedroom with all his little gaming figures and bobbleheads behind him, how the fuck do you know that he's a sex trafficker when the fucking police in Romania who've been investigating this since fucking April haven't provided any exactly. evidence forward? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we live in a world where where the majority of the people that are speaking are fucking dumb. They're so stupid. Every day I go online, I'm surrounded by dummies. <laughs> That's hilarious. But, okay, um, I have a question for you. And this is something a bit different, but it's something that I've seen you've been tweeting out recently. I wanted to touch upon this topic. I do not know too much about it, though, so I want you to try to explain it to me the best you can. Hogwarts Legacy. What is up Good with question. that game? Um, Hogwarts Legacy is a Harry Potter game. Harry Potter was uh, created by um, J.K. Rowling, JK yeah. Rowling. And J.K. Rowling has been labeled as a transphobic individual mm -hmm. by the trans community. And um, I've been putting out some tweets that I will not buy be buying Hogwarts uh, <laughs> Legacy as a troll. <laughs> yeah, and... Um, you know, it's it's been a very successful troll. A lot of people are either mad at me and up in arms because they they are buying the the Harry Potter game or a lot of activists, um, you know, think I'm just doing this for clout, which they're right. So they're mad. And nice. know, it's, yeah. it's been a lot of fun to to troll. Is it actually anything about the game that makes it transphobic itself? Or is it just the fact that JK Rowling is labeled as a transphobic? It's just that fact. And I think the developers added a trans character to appease. Oh, okay. They added a trans character to appease the mob that's trying to cancel the game. And that's mm -hmm. still like, it's yeah, just the even most, then, yeah. It's the most ridiculous thing. And so when I see something like that, like obviously I'm going to, I'm going to meme it. And so I have been memeing it. Um, however, with that being said, you know, I do support all people and being, whoever they want to be if someone you know wants to be you know trans or, or whatever feels that they're trans um you know i support them as long as you're not harming anyone else i support all people and whatever they want to do or or be so are, are like twitch streamers like hassan piker and these guys like actually not playing the game i don't think so i think it's more of a meme Oh that, shit. That people are boycotting it than people are actually boycotting it. I think everyone's playing the game. Yeah, a lot of people for sure. Really I don't know. Game. I don't know any content creator that is legitimately boycotting the game. I feel like I have been the voice to of all these trolls saying they're boycotting it, right? <laughs> I've been the 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 I've taken the role as the leader, you, you know. What well, what's your thoughts on this like recent controversy of like people getting mad at like speed and hassan for like donating money um i don't know really that much about it but basically hassan piker who i don't like i don't like him either, yeah has uh decided to raise a bunch of money for the victims of turkey and syria who have suffered a 7.8 earthquake multiple built buildings in the cities have just like fell over. And the mm -hmm. last report I've seen is at least 3000 people are dead. So Hassan Piker has been raising money um, mm -hmm. for those victims. Speed was going to donate 50,000, but then his audience was trying to convince him that Hassan Piker's uh, charity or whatever 
um, was a scam. So he only donated 2000. So that's the controversy. I don't think Hassan Piker is running any scam or doing anything wrong. Um, and I think speed got gaslit by his own community into donating yeah. less money. Here's the problem with charities though, dude, it doesn't matter what you're St. Jude. All right. Let, let's talk about St. Jude. St. Jude is one of the most respected charities I know of. And, and many Twitch streamers raised tons of money. All right. When this controversy came up, me and Brantley, um, we went to our little cafe that we, we go to, had a couple drinks. I'm driving home. It's like 10 AM. Right. And, um, Brantley, my girlfriend goes, I wonder what charities are like actually scams. Cause we were talking about the issue. Mm -hmm. So she starts looking up St. Jude, the CEO of St. Jude. All right. Makes 1.3 million dollars a fucking year in salary <laughs> all right so it's like saint jude's one of the most respected charities is like kind of a and then there's like all these articles where they're like hoarding billions of billions of dollars or something i i just i don't trust anyone all right all like, over the please when we talk about like scams like dude there's scams everywhere man i don't trust anyone yeah no that's fair that's fair it's hard to donate to charities. It really is. Yeah, for sure. Like, you don't know where your money's going. Bro, I remember at when 9-11 happened, like, everybody, like, millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and I, probably billions of dollars was donated to the American Red Cross. And, like, the money went missing or something. I don't remember all the details. <laughs> but if you Google this, there's a whole fucking conspiracy and there's a whole scandal surrounding the the millions and millions of dollars that was donated where the money went and it disappeared or some shit like again i don't have all the details but look this up like giving money to charity uh you don't know if your money's actually going to the fucking cause bro exactly yeah. and also dude it's like the laziest fucking thing all right you know you you're you're a fucking you're a rich gamer right who's sitting there and um you know, you're, you're a Twitch streamer or whatever you are. Right. And you're just going to throw some money at, at a fucking problem and beat your chest that you're a good dude yeah. right? or you're a good, um, you know, female or a lot of times these Twitch streamers, they raise the money. So their fans are the ones that are actually donating the money. Right. Um, and you, you beat your chest, but you're not like, I feel like the best charity you could possibly do is be on the ground and in person working like physically working to help an mm -hmm. issue whether yeah. that's like digging wells in a third world country or helping to build homes or doing disaster relief somewhere like there was a time where there was a hurricane um down in like texas that hit texas and uh i remember jake paul and his buddies got into a truck and they drove all the way down to Texas and they fucking went door to door and they were saving people that were caught in these flood uh, districts. Like that is my ideal um, idea of what charity should be. Like For actually sure. getting off your ass and fucking doing something to make a change. Cause a lot of times you don't know where your money is going to. <laughs> Very easy to do that. Yeah. That type of charity, the more physical charity is more, you know, hands-on and you're actually making a change at the end of the day money is still paper and you're just throwing away money to just you know say that you're a good person but what have you really done you don't even know where that money's going yeah no it's a fair point so keem before we even end up end off the podcast i actually don't know if you ever addressed this so i just wanted to hear from with my own ears right you know that really viral moment with aiden ross like, what's your whole thoughts on that? Because I feel like I see that every day and it's everywhere. I think it's funny. You know, it's funny, right? It I, doesn't really affect you, does it? Well, I went in there. I went in there to like mess with those guys, right? And they're accusing me of killing the vibe. I did kill the vibe. <laughs> like, that's, that's what I <laughs> oh, so you did it by purpose? Of course. Really, I I find that hard to believe. No way, you did that by purpose. I literally went in and, and was like, yo, you're in trouble. <laughs> that crypto shit. What do you mean not on purpose? The most evil thing. No, like. because, bro, these guys like 
H3 and Hassan Piker, I feel like they try to use that as a diss. And it's like, I never really see you responding to that. Yeah, well, it's not my fault if you don't get the joke. Like, you just look stupid. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> do you, Muneev, you have any more questions? No, uh, no, that's about it. Hell of a good all talk right, with you to do. That's all my we turn. had for today. Thank you so much for coming on. We Look, appreciate your I time. mean, if you're bent out of shape out of that fucking Aiden Ross stream, I guess mission accomplished. <laughs> no, that's Thanks fair. for having that's me fair. on. Thank you Thanks for, for being on, on brother. You, brother. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Peace out.